but we are going to start with some actual breaking news tonight. Some actual breaking news on a story that up until this point we have really not been covering. Uh, this is not about Tiger Woods' personal life and the lascivious details thereof, uh, but there is big news, big breaking news tonight about the business of Tiger Woods. The best golfer and the most famous active athlete in the world tonight announced that he will take leave of professional golf indefinitely to try to salvage his family life which, of course, has been ravaged by two weeks of public scandal about his extramarital affairs. Mr. Woods announced on his website tonight, quote, I am deeply aware of the disappointment and hurt that my infidelity has caused so many people, most of all, my wife and children. After much soul-searching, I have decided to take an indefinite break from professional golf. I need to focus my attention on being a better husband, father, and person. It has been two weeks since Mr. Woods' mysterious solo car accident outside his Florida home, and those two weeks have been filled hour to hour with rather astonishingly lurid details of his extracurricular sexual pursuits. The PGA Tour tonight expressed support for Tiger Woods' decision to take a break from the sport. How long he will be gone from competition remains to be seen, but his absence will be big news. Big business news, as several industries which have relied on his star power bear the brunt of his actions, of the gossip those actions have generated, and now by his decision to step away from the sport that he transformed. Joining us now is sports and gambling columnist for the Philadelphia Inquirer, former producer at ESPN, and the executive producer of this show, my friend Bill Wolf. Bill, thank you. My pleasure. Am I allowed to call you a sports and gambling columnist? Well, you, you know, uh, you are what you are. <laughs> I don't. Rec I recommend sports. I don't recommend gambling. That's what the column's about. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. But th that, and that is a, that is a part of the business of sports. But let me let me confront you with this, AP yeah. uh, tonight. Um, this will be the second straight season the PGA Tour begins without its number one player, although this, of course, is different. A year ago, Tiger Woods was out of golf for eight months while recovering from reconstructive knee surgery. And during that time, U.S. television ratings dropped 50% yep. for golf in his yep. absence. Yep. Now it's going to happen all over again. Yep. Is it ever going to come back? Yep. Okay. Uh, but for the moment, you have the problem of the TV ratings. Then think about the problem of the golf tournaments. Golf tournaments generate economy in the places where they're held, San Diego or Hawaii or Florida or wherever they might be this spring. They start in warm weather places. So he will miss tournaments in Hawaii, in California, potentially Arizona, and potentially Florida. The ticket sales will be down, the merchandise sales, the food. And I mean, just this is money changing hands in local markets that now won't. And there's more. Tiger Woods is an industry. It's not just companies that advertise around him, like Gillette Razors advertise around him, and Gatorade makes products about him, and Tag Heuer watches. Think about Nike. Nike launched its golf line because Tiger Woods existed. It's all about Tiger Woods. That industry, that company, Nike, does $600 million a year in golf equipment and apparel sales, and that's based on Tiger Woods. So TV is one part of it, but the gross domestic product around this guy is in the billions of dollars, just in terms of the amount of money that's being exchanged between companies and the number of jobs that that creates. So See, we think about we think about the money of Tiger Woods being the money that he takes home, which is enormous. Yeah, but that's just part of the story. I mean, he's a, he's an industry. Well, the part, the way I understand the economic impact of Tiger Woods is that he transformed. He and I are roughly the, the same age. He's a little bit younger than I am, I think. And I remember when he sort of broke onto the scene. I remember him being on the cover of uh, Sports Illustrated, a Sportsman of the Year, when he was yep. like, what, 20 years old? 21, yeah. Um, and for me, it seemed like the economic impact he was going to have is that all of a sudden golf felt like a sport that wasn't just for country club white guys. Yep. This, he, he, he personally broke the sport open, and over the course of the past 15 years, he has made it one that involves a lot of younger people and is seen as being a much more diverse, uh, accessible sport. Can that, which has an enormous economic impact, yes, can nice. that be undone? Uh, I think that it can. Uh, I mean, consider the recent precedent of Alex Rodriguez, who's a different guy and has different impact, but was similarly shamed. Here was a guy who was exposed for having done performance-enhancing drugs and lying about it publicly and shamelessly, right? Mm -hmm. He also had had uh, affairs on his wife who had his children very publicly on the cover of the tabloids here and there with this or that woman who wasn't his wife. And he was destroyed publicly. He was a, the butt of a joke, Alex Rodriguez. Well, he had a great year after he came back from being injured, and he performed magnificently 
for the Yankees as they went on to win the World Series. And guess what? It is all good for Alex Rodriguez today. Mm -hmm. Now, Tiger is different. Tiger is uh, more important singularly. He's in an individual sport, and he's the only guy like him in that sport. So that is different. There is more economy around Tiger, and Tiger's image is more important to the business around Tiger than Alex Rodriguez's image was. But Alex Rodriguez, Kobe Bryant, various other big, famous, and really successful athletes have all recovered from uh, reputation damage by performing again. If Tiger Woods plays golf again, and he will, and succeeds again, which I think remains to be seen, I think all will be forgiven, and a lot of what made him a great sales icon, which is really mainly his excellence, more than his image, it's his excellence, uh, will return and will be restored. But for the moment, it's all in doubt. So you think that you think that the the economic and really sort of socially transformative juggernaut in sports of Tiger Woods was not about his perceived character, but really was about his ability. Well, I think it was about, to some degree, it was his his character. We we all projected this wholesomeness on him, and he played this wholesome game. I think to a large degree, it was, it has been that he's African American, and young and athletic in a sport which you don't associate with any of those things. So what made him so iconic was how different he was from everybody else who had played the game and also that he played it at this unprecedentedly brilliant level. So I think of those three things, his brilliant play, his distinguishing uh, physical characteristics, <laughs> and his image, I think image was the least important of them, actually. How long do you think he'll be out? I think he'll be back by mid-spring because he, the golf, golfing like tennis has major or grand slam tournaments. The first one is in, uh, the Masters is in April. Yep. Uh, he is obsessed with winning those tournaments, those four tournaments each year. I don't think he'll miss out an opportunity to play at the Masters, and so I expect he will be back uh, March. That's my guess. But I don't, he, he hasn't called. He hasn't come to listen. Sitting by my phone. He is welcome on the Rachel Maddow show if he wants to talk about it. Everybody keeps saying he's got to go on Oprah. Why, Why not? Yeah, exactly. Us? Who's the best interviewer in the business? Tiger. Or Bill Wolf could help, well, since he knows something well, about sports. I'll, I'll sit there and smile. <laughs> Bill Wolf, uh, sports columnist for Philadelphia Inquirer, a person who encourages people not to gamble I on do. sports, uh, and executive producer of the show and the executive vice president of Primetime at MSNBC, an all around good guy. Thank you. My pleasure.